continue talking about the Continental Grip, and this is part two of my series on the Continental Grip. I'm hoping to incorporate the Continental Grip in the entire cord and how you can use it, but today we're still talking about the short cord with focus on the left hand and the left hand's role in the Continental Grip. Now, let's recall my left hand first is on the racket throat and I've got it held so that my thumb is over my fingertips. The racket is standing straight up and down. And when I do that, my right hand is in the racket. I know that my right hand knuckle is correctly in Continental because it's on that second bevel there. The first one on top, the second one over. That's my Continental grip. And as I hold the grip, I'm holding it slightly backhand. Now why would I do that? My left hand is holding it up but any ball that comes to my body, this is the only way that I can handle that ball. I can't possibly turn my racket to hit on the forehand side for any ball that comes at my body. So in my preparation, rather than being straight and this mystery of what to do, my left hand helps by keeping the racket slightly tipped towards my backhand side because positions here, even though this is on my right side of the body, this is how I will take a ball that's too close to me. Beyond that, we need to look at the role of the left hand. Now, in the first video, we talked about that first step, the racket goes out with the right leg. Ideally, the racket goes out with the right leg and the left leg comes forward as I swing. The racket path is for the most part flat, but we do need to acknowledge the North Pole and the South Pole of the racket. The South Pole is slightly ahead. That's very important. If my racket is too flat, perpendicular to the ground, that ball likely is just gonna go right into the net. It will drop before it rises. So let's go back and look at the left hand here again. The left hand's holding the racket slightly in the backhand position. And as I step out to the side in the short court, my left hand stays. I know in the first video I mentioned it's starting to reach out for the ball. And that's a nice way to orient the distance between the ball and the racket. If it's at my outstretched fingers, that's about the point where I'm gonna make contact. But I need to make sure that my left hand stays here as I swing because I'm coming right back into my ready position. And the left hand encourages a very short back swing. The arms work together. If my left arm moves too far back, well, guess what? My right arm moves far back. They work in tandem. So one moves one way, the other moves the other. Now let's look at that again. Right leg out with the racket. Left arm is gonna stay. As I swing for the ball, I come right back into my left hand. I don't go past. The left arm is there for a purpose in this short court. It's to get the racket to stop at this point on that swing and come back. It's not a big full swing. It's a controlled swing here. It's also, think of it for a volley, kind of the same way. That racket is going to volley, stop, come through. It's not a swinging volley. I'm not swinging at the ball. There are many variables that happen here. There are times when I can't move my left leg forward as I strike the ball. Maybe it's just my right leg just kind of stepping out, but they do work together. The right leg and racket work together. Ideally, I can use my body. I'd like to use my body to help with the swing by stepping in. Maybe I'm even moving forward after as I swing. But that left hand again, we're talking about that today, is preventing me from going beyond this position here. So as the ball's coming, my left hand, for the most part, stays. I'm telling my beginner students, leave the left hand there as the racket goes back, make contact with the ball, and return. This is important because as we go further down the line, 
The left hand roll in the deep court, I'll use an eastern grip here, is to carry the racket over. That way I'm turning. So the left hand roll in the deep court is to carry the racket over to this midpoint. Look how much it's forced me to turn. Here I don't want to turn so much. If I turn my body in the short court, I've got to turn my body back. And I may not have time. Balls can be coming back and forth so quickly. I need to maintain this open stance. Left arm is going to stay and be ready for the racket to come back. And I'm again, I'm holding it slightly backhand because anything at my body is here. So again, for my beginning students, this is where I want you to, do, to uh, advance to in this second part of the continental grip. It's that position with the left hand. As the racket goes out with the right leg, the left hand is gonna stay. As you swing at the ball, the racket comes right back and you're ready for the next shot. Out to the side, the left hand stays. Maybe you're gonna step into it this time and you're gonna come back and we're ready. That's part two of the continental grip where I would like you, my beginner students, to continue. And then we're gonna advance from here where we're gonna start adding more movement to the ball. How do we get our feet in the right position and how that affects where the left hand goes and where the racket goes as well.